Hey everybody, uh, Dana Rosendahl here again. We're back in my welding shop in Oaks, North Dakota. And uh, my topic today is going to be uh, the process that we build our PTO pumps, our, our, our Dynaflow PTO pumps. Um, you're gonna love the automation and the advancements that we've made versus the way we used to do it. And I'm gonna use that term, the way we used to do it quite a bit today because the way we used to do it was, it was precisioned. Uh, we could replicate it time after time again. We've, we've done it 136 times on, on the pumps, but we always knew there was probably a, probably a little better, more efficient way to do things. So uh, these pipes right behind me here, this pipe, <clears throat> um, I'm gonna grab the camera here in a second and I'll walk you down it and show you the way we used to uh, align the pipes, put our holes in it, uh, do what we call our copes. It's, uh, we're excited about this. Uh, we think it's gonna be interesting to others. Uh, I can't stress how critical it is for these holes in the pipe to be right on every time. This pump runs at 1,000 RPMs. And at 1,000 RPMs, if that shaft is not nestled or nested in the center of that pipe properly, it's gonna shake. And of course, uh, shakes and vibration is what wrecks pumps. So uh, uh, we've been able to hold the tolerances and, and uh, manufacture these pumps successfully. Like I said, 136 pumps so far sold, built and sold, and we're manufacturing still as we speak. So these are the, uh, this is the 20 foot pieces of pipe that we use. Uh, the guys use this trailer to bring them into the shop and then they put them up on these rollers so that they can roll it around and manipulate it. It's a 12 and 3 quarter inch pipe. Uh, it's got a quarter inch wall. This is what we refer, refer to as well casing. Uh, it's what they use for drilling wells or, uh, or making wells, I should say. These holes that we see here, uh, what we do is we take a, a angle finder and we find top dead center at this end. And at this end and the other end, we snap a line between the two and then we use a drill, a magnetic drill that we place on top of here and drill all these holes. Now, uh, this hole here is nothing more than a jigging hole for our, our, our uh, pedestal alignment. This one's a drain hole when the pump is operating for the packing box. But the rest of these holes are used for installing our bearings that support the shaft in the center of this pipe. And as I said, the, the, it is absolutely critical that they are in the same spot every time and dead center in the middle of this pipe. So, all right, I have uh, went ahead and set up the uh, magnetic drill here. Uh, we made a device so that the magnetic drill would fasten on the pipe. We used a piece of channel iron, put a couple of hooks on it and use a ratchet strap to tighten it up. The operator that does this, uh, uh, of course the, the magnetic drill uh, while you're drilling has to be lubricated, so he has to continually squirt some uh, sauce in there to keep the bit from burning. And of course, uh, he could advance it and drill all these holes. That's what this is about, so. Um, and of course this, when you turn it on, the magnetic uh, base attaches itself to this so it doesn't move around. So kind of a lengthy process, uh, tedious, but we successfully kept this, uh, our line of uh, precision good while we were doing this. So, and of course the operator that's doing this has to do six holes along this pipe, every single pipe. I went ahead and uh, put on our, our coping jig. 
And that's uh, a, a pipe that's a little larger than a 12 and 3 quarter split. And we wrap it around there. And of course, to make sure everything stays aligned, that one hole that I said earlier, this is nothing that's not there for anything other than alignment. And then there's another step in the uh, building process that we need that hole for. But um, the individual, once this is clamped on, then they take a plasma cutting tool and cut all these holes. And of course we make the, we make the hole, the hole is actually larger than the jig because of the drag on the plasma. Uh, if you just follow this lip, it will cut this hole, this hole being five inches. So <clears throat> same uh, process on the copes, the coping holes and both sides have to be done. And of course, the hole for their, the three inch air vent, all at the same time will get cut. Now, anybody, if you know anything about plasma, when they're finished cutting these holes, there is a unreal amount of spatter that sticks to the inside of this pipe that has to be cleaned out. And uh, not only does it have to be cleaned out, but then these, the edges are very, very sharp and a lot of slag on them. They all have to be ground off. Uh, the outside has to be smoothed out. And that goes for all four holes. So time consuming process, the way we used to do it. Again, the way we used to do it. Successfully, but we found a better way and and you're going to be amazed at how good this works. All right, I went ahead and uh, I lifted this pipe up into place with the, the winch. It's an electric winch that we have that the guys use to move stuff around out here. Um, and I put one of the, the discharges in place over the cope hole, as you can see. Uh, and starts to kind of take shape, I guess. There's, there'll be another one on this side, and then of course at that end, you can put on your uh, flange and axles and those sort of things. But uh, the pump is, we can manipulate the pipe a little bit because it's on rollers. And uh, they come down to this end, and of course there's air lift on there, so that once it's in the jig, we can turn it and manipulate it. Uh, this is the end that the flange goes on and if they need to move it one end or the other they can scooch it over and uh, that's the kind of process we put the axles on they stick out like this and, uh, they're right there we've got some pumps uh, being built right now so these are uh, this is the raw product here all right, now I'm in the paint booth. And uh, these are the uh, pumps that have been manufactured already. And uh, we've got two of them out in the assembler area right now that are all painted, got their stickers on and such. These uh, carts that we use to put on each end of these pumps, that was something new too, that's another story on how we used to do it, but these pumps have all been uh, brushed and wiped down. They're ready for paint Monday morning. Uh, our guy wraps the axles so that we don't get paint on those. And uh, it's all good. This is part of the process, so. Well, hello everybody. Uh, I'm at Wise Graham's Manufacturing in Fargo, North Dakota, and uh, these guys are cutting our Dynaflow pumps for us, our flood pumps. They're doing the, uh, the coping holes and, and our mounting holes for our pedestal bearings, and the machine that they're using uh, is able to put a, like a 48-foot piece of pipe in it. And of course, our pipe's only 22 foot, but uh, 
Uh, it's 12 and three quarter inch pipe steel and it's totally automated. They've got the program written. Uh, they took the information off and some of the prints that we had and uh, truly really amazing piece of machinery. I'm going to shoot a bunch of uh, uh, more footage. He takes the pipes from the uh, staging area right here in front of us and sets them in the jig. These are a great bunch of guys to work with <clears throat> here at Wisegram. We've selected these guys to uh, cut all our core poles and our uh, our drill holes where we mount our pedestals for each of the uh, um, pedestals that are our bearing supports in our Dynaflow pump. This machine can handle up to 48 foot long piece of metal. So uh, it's quite amazing. Our pipes are 22, but in a minute we'll start the video here and they will take that pipe everything just automated it'll roll the pipe into place that chuck at that far end down there will move up into place grab the pipe orientate the weld seam to a 12 o'clock position and and then start the whole process of cutting all our holes and I'll get that on video also. All right, we're starting the process. <clears throat> Here comes the the chuck <clears throat> that will orientate the pipe or the pipe's already been orientated, I believe. <laughs> and that's the way it's done right here at Wisegram when they cut the things they leave a little stitch in both ends of this piece here right there and then the far end you just barely see them and that's so this piece doesn't fall out and their roller can still roll across here as it's maneuvering to cut the other side. And then he takes a hammer and knocks them out before he puts it on the rack. We're uh, doing this to try to keep our manufacturing costs down and be able to keep building pumps because uh, People keep calling. Uh, we're in the process of building six more, so they're cutting six pumps, pieces of pipe for us today. Uh, but uh, spring is coming, and we know we're going to have some sales. Uh, so we'll probably have another run of 10, I would guess, within the next month or two. So um, all is well. 
and uh, here from uh, Wise Graham Tooling and Machining in Fargo, North Dakota. So the conclusion of this uh, before and after video is the fact that uh, when I was at Wise Graham's having the pipe cut, um, it took me about six and a half minutes from the time the pipe entered their jigging system until it came out the other side of the laser uh, and was loaded on a pellet and ready for me to take out of the shop on one pipe. It took six and a half minutes. Uh, that process that we were doing in our shop takes four and a half hours. Um, and uh, we have, uh, you know, <clears throat> checked numerous times and, you know, just uh, done different things to help the process along, but it just takes a lot of time for a man to drill the holes, cut the copes, manipulate the pipe, move it around, um, and get it back into, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the rack so that it, it can then be uh, welded on. A um, lot of cleanup, a lot of time. So this is a big step forward for us here at Dynaflow. And I guess uh, we're really glad that uh, you took the time to watch this video and, and uh, stay uh, tuned because there's more to come.